Brad in the back over here, Kenny Rota, WHBC Sports. They were in control 77-56 in the third quarter. What changed at that point to allow you guys to get back in and then eventually get the win? Um, you know, I, I felt like, I really felt like in the first half we played way better than the score. Um, I thought that they, you know, maybe there's a couple of shots we could have challenged better, but I was hoping that the law of averages would kick in at some point. Um, some of those shots were just incredible. Um, and then, you know, I felt like we started slow in the third quarter, and it was, it was disappointing because I felt like we could get back in that thing. I um, thought both teams were a little sloppy at that point. And then our guys were better uh, towards the end of the third and, you know, goes back and forth in the fourth, and we're lucky to win. Was it defense or offense you, you think really got you back in this and won the game? Well, I mean, we're not, we're not going to win unless we score the ball. But um, our defense was pretty good all night. Um, and I know that sounds crazy, um, but like on a lot of love shots, on Kyrie Irving shots, um, I thought our defense was pretty good all night. Um, you know, there are things that we'll have to look at and do better, but you know, we were pretty connected, pretty locked in. That's why I was disappointed at the start of the third quarter. But the bench did a good job, specifically Jonas Jerebko, of lifting us at that time. Mark Murphy, Boston Herald, Brad. Um, a lot over the course of Marcus's career has been made about what a poor shooter he is, but he always seems to hit him late. Uh, just what did you see of that in him tonight? I mean, I think we talked about it Monday. You know, we can we can talk about his shooting all year long, but you know, when it's in a big moment, that kid's gonna rise to the occasion. He just always has. Um, and, um, you know, that's one of the reasons why, you know, if he goes through a funk at some time in March, shoot yourself out of it, and we believe in you and let it fly. Because in this moment, you know, when we needed him the most, um, he made huge shots. He was terrific tonight. Adam Himmel's by Boston Globe. You've talked about it before Brad, with this team, but in this case, you know, the way the first two games went, not having Isaiah down 21 with six minutes left in the third, what, uh, I guess what did you kind of see from on the bench? What was the, the mood, and how do they kind of stay so resilient when there was every reason to not be? Well, when we won here last year, we were down big. When we had a chance to win earlier this year, we were down big. So, you know, we've been in that situation before, but... Um, we were playing way better, Adam. You know, I don't know how to phrase it other than that. We were playing way better. We were getting good shots on offense and playing with great purpose. Um, and on defense, I thought we were much better than, their, than the score indicated. So I think that when you play better, you feel better, and you just kind of stay the course. Did you get a sense the guys realized that and felt that as, you know, as you're down 21? with? Well, I know they don't listen to very much that I say, but I try to say it as much as possible. So... Um, because I felt that way. I mean, I felt, I felt like by, it was by far the best first half we played. And, you know, it could have easily been a four-point game instead of a 16-point game. Brad, Ray Jasky, Ray Jasky from ESPN 990. Uh, after the disaster of just 48 hours ago where everything seemed to go wrong and you lose Isaiah, how would you get your guys to come here and play like this? Play this hard, like you're saying in the first half. Play like it mattered. Play like they cared. How, because it could have been easy to pack it up and, and, and quit. Yeah, they didn't. How'd, they get, how'd you get them to come in not, like that? It's not who we have in our locker room. Um, we've got guys that have chips on their shoulders. We've got guys that have, you know, a lot of these guys have been overlooked, and this is their first opportunity to really play a meaningful role. And as they've continued to play it, play it better and better and better, um, they've just risen in their games and our team. Um, and uh, And so, you know, we knew that Friday was a, 46-point disaster, worth one. It wasn't worth all four. It was worth one. So we got back together. Yesterday was a little bit tough. Um, today we had our spirit back. Shoot-around was great. And what did you do defensively against LeBron? Well, first of all, I think there's only so much you can do. We just tried to be as solid as possible. Um, we tried to switch a little bit less. Um, you know, and um, and you know, I think our you know we have a couple of guards out there that are bigger guards, 
Um, and we just tried to rotate bodies on him. We were lucky that Jay Crowder, Jay Crowder picked up his fourth, I think, in the third. Um, and, you know, the threat of not having him out there is, is scary. He picked up his third, middle of the first, I think, middle of the first half. So we were glad that he was able to finish. Julian from the Globe. Uh, just piggybacking on the defending LeBron question. Uh, you threw a lot of different options at him, and Jonas said you guys made an adjustment late. Uh, was that it, finding the guards to, to defend him? Or? Well, I mean, we have all, I mean, we've gone every which way on that guy. You know, you, right when you think you figure something out, he just kills you. So, um, you know, I don't want to act like we've figured anything out. Uh, one last one with LeBron. This, it seemed like the second half he just wasn't his normal aggressive self that we've seen in this. I mean, he hasn't even scored less than 30 points in any game this postseason. You guys held him to 11. Was there something maybe about his, his mood or his aggressiveness that was different in the second half than you've seen the rest of the series? He's such an unselfish player. He made so many great plays. Some of the people talk about that led to extra passes. Some that led to assists. He's the best player in the world. I'm not going to criticize him one bit. I mean, I don't know what to say other than he's a handful. Coach Martinico, Celtics.com. 10.7 seconds left. Tie game. You call timeout. Um, obviously, we know what happened, but what, can you just walk us through what you drew up for the team? Um, and what were you were thinking when that ball was bouncing on the rim before it fell through? Thank God it's bouncing on the rim because that's taking time. <laughs> you know, if it goes in or doesn't go in, they have a timeout left. And we didn't want to go. We wanted to go at six seconds. Um, and the hope was that they'd have less than one if they did get it, the ball. So when it bounced around, I was actually hoping it went in, obviously, but not completely disappointed that it was bouncing up there. And Avery was the primary option? Steve Ball, Pat Boston Herald. You, first couple of games, you said that uh, when things weren't going right, you guys seemed to get down, seemed to deflate a little bit. Marcus seems to get the opposite attitude when those situations arise. How did that affect how you were able to come back tonight, just him getting angry? Seemed. Yeah, I don't know if it was angry. I thought he was really purposeful all night. He's competitive, um, spirited, but played with good poise. Um, again, I, I credit... Uh, he was tremendous, um, and I thought our other starters played really, really hard. You know, I thought Avery um, didn't have a great shooting night, but he p played as hard as he could on the other end of the floor. And Jay Crowder, I mean, guarding LeBron is a is a handful. And then Al had his moments, especially in the fourth quarter. He made big plays for us. But Marcus just kind of led us, and just and, and um, you know, one of the things about Marcus is he's going to play regardless of the score. Like uh, you, you mentioned, I mean, he's going to compete, and sometimes he'll. He'll try to hit home runs because that's and, – and, and then we talk about those after the game and we always say, and it's true, it's, those are his greatest strengths. Like he is a true competitor. There's, um, he's a tough guy. He's a tough guy. But the other one that we haven't talked about, I mean, I just thought Jarebko was huge. And this whole postseason for us has been built on the next guy that hasn't played that much being ready and kind of helping take the whole team to a new level. Jared Way, CLNS Media. So I was going to ask about Jonas. He came in middle of the third quarter in the 21-point deficit erased pretty quickly. What did he do to really unlock the side-to-side -side movement for you on offense? Well, I thought it was that. But it was also, obviously, he's a spacer. So being able to kick out and knock down those shots, he got the tip in. Um, but more important than that was the energy on defense. He blocked a shot, got a couple of rebounds, kept balls alive. Like um, We just needed just a little jolt. Um, and... Uh, you know, I think I do think like there's sometimes guys that haven't played quite as much. There's a real energy and desire um, to go out and and put it all out there. And sometimes you get gassed early, but he's done a good job of staying in shape.